Introduced in the 13th issue of Fantastic Four, the Watcher is a member of this superior race who is meant to sit there and watch things go down, but his love for the planet overcame his sense of duty and he decided to warn our heroes about the impending doom. This benevolent character who looks like a bald man with blue eyes has shown up several times in the past and in the future to help people out because his love for the planet is quite strong. After repeated appearances, the fans got curious about the Watcher and his powers, so in this video we will learn more about the Watcher Watchers as a race, specifically the Watcher Uatu, who sees over our home planet, the rules he has to follow and what types of powers he has that he can use to protect our home planet in the hour of need. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you and let's begin. Who are the Watchers? Why did the Watchers decide to stop getting involved in the affairs of other races? The world as we know it was not made yesterday. It was made several billion years ago. Obviously, there was a race that emerged first in the universe and eventually after that species a race was created, the others followed. This first race is who we know as the Watchers. In the beginning, the Watchers were not like the way we know them. In fact, when they first came to be, i a Watcher, proposed that as a highly advanced race, it is their duty to share the knowledge and the technology they have with less advanced races. So based on i suggestion, the Watchers gave knowledge about atomic energy to the planet known as Prosilicus. The people of the planet happily accepted the knowledge and the technology on their planet started advancing. But greed and jealousy are universal feelings. Soon enough, the Watchers saw the Prosilicans create nuclear weapons using the knowledge that they had given them, and armed with those nuclear weapons, the Prosilicans waged a war between themselves, leading to the whole race being wiped out. i the Watcher who proposed the idea of sharing knowledge with the less advanced planets was understandably stricken with horror. He could not believe that his interference brought about the extinction of an entire race, and he knew that there was nothing that he could do to change what he had done. So he and the Watchers vowed to never interfere again. Ikor himself designed a code of ethics to prevent this from happening again. As we learned, Uatu, the Watcher of Earth, is the son of Ikor. He tried his best to make his father realize that the idea of sharing knowledge was noble, and that Ikor should not feel bad about what had happened, but i refused to understand. When i made the code of ethics, Uatu asked his father if this passive watching would not hinder the growth of a race that was facing imminent danger, but i was rigid in his opinions. In his eyes, had he not asked the Watchers to share the knowledge with the Prosilicans, the race would still be alive. Uatu did not quite understand his father's plight, but he tried his best to. The race came to call themselves the Watchers, and they were all over the cosmos watching over events happening without interfering in them. One day, Uatu came across something that made him want to interfere in the event really badly. He saw Yirids, the people of the planet Urest, throwing out atomic waste by hurling it deep into space. Uatu knew that if the atomic waste cloud came across a planet in its way, it would affect the whole civilization of the planet and maybe even wipe out the life in that planet completely. However, he simply decided to keep a close eye on it and not interfere. Eventually, after a few decades, he witnessed a supernova that created a rogue planet that went hurling through space and that planet collided with the atomic waste cloud and neutralized it. This made Owatu believe in his father's words of not interfering with the course of things and letting them just go the way they should go. Eventually, the Watchers were assigned on a particular planet that they needed to watch over and Owatu ended up with Earth. He made his Citadel on the blue side of the moon and kept a close eye on our planet. His interest in the history of Earth was very genuine, and that pushed him to look at Earth in different alternate universes. Now, given it is an alternate universe, there has to be one where the Prosilicans were not dead, right? Sadly, no matter which universe he checked, each one had to wipe down other Prosilicans, which led to the Watchers taking the vow of non-interference. Now, over the years, Uatu did not feel the need to interfere with the way Earthlings led their lives until one day he noticed a disruption in the time flow. In 1602 AD, a possible future version of Captain America accidentally went back in time, which led to this disruption. So to fix that, Uatu showed himself to the Elizabethan version of Doctor Strange and asked him to help Captain America go back in time. With Uatu's help, Doctor Strange was able to send Captain America via the right time portal, hence correcting the whole timeline. However, Uatu's superior decided to keep the divergent timeline to persist, and this led to the formation of Earth-311.
Where exactly was Uatu the Watcher stationed to witness multiverse events? Uatu the Watcher was assigned to planet Earth as the planet he needed to keep his eyes on. As he is a fifth dimensional being and he had to keep an eye on not only Earth 616 but all the other Earths as well, he decided to stay at the Nexus of All Realities. For those who do not know, the Nexus of All Realities is a gateway that spans across dimensions. This gateway allows anyone to peer into all the possible alternate realities there are. Being in this gateway helped Uatu to observe all the different realities and the different outcomes that each of these realities had. As we have mentioned before, Uatu was very invested in the multiverse because he wanted to find one alternate reality where his race did not make a grave mistake, and this gateway really helped him in his search. But what happens if someone wants to reach out to the Watcher? Where would they find him? His home, obviously. Once he was given to planet Earth to look after, Uatu decided to make a home for himself near Earth so that he could keep his eyes on the planet. The best place in his judgment was the blue side of the moon. The fact that Watcher lived there was known by the Inhumans, who also lived on the moon, and Nick Fury for some reason. The Watcher chose the moon because it gave him some well-needed distance from the task at hand, and also lowered the distractions he may have been facing. Does he have a physical body? Does he need food to survive? If you are a fan of the animated series The Silver Surfer that came out in 1998, you will recall that Uatu showed up there as well to inform the Silver Surfer about Galactus who was coming to feed on his planet. But when Uatu told him that, he did not take a physical form and showed up in front of the guy. Instead, Uatu was merely a floating head in the sky who was informing Silver Surfer about the impending doom. This definitely led to a few people wondering if the Watcher has a body. Over the years, we have watched the lore about the Watcher expand and we have all learned that the Watcher is extremely powerful. Even in the Marvel Zombies Return, the Watcher was not turned or infected even though Galactus, who is a universal threat, fell to the zombies, so this begs the question about Uatu's body and how it works. Well, as we have seen through the comic books, the Watcher and his race actually do have physical bodies. This led to his eye being plucked out and having remains of his body when he died at one point. However, that does not mean that his body cannot be converted into energy. At one point, we see Uatu fight with another Watcher, and the fight ends when Uatu turns the Watcher into living energy, so their physical form is not permanent like ours. However, that does not mean that his physical form is weak. Surprisingly enough, the Watcher's body is as durable if not more than that of Kree, Asgardians, Titans, and even Ego. When we see the Watcher fight with Ultron, we realize just how durable he is because even though Ultron punched him several times and destroyed universes with him, the Watcher did not sustain a lot of injuries. He did lose consciousness at one point for a few seconds. When he wakes up and sees that Ultron is trying to crush his head, the Watcher simply resists Ultron's force until he manages to create a portal and escape. What makes this even cooler is that when Ultron was trying to crush the Watcher's skull, he was using the powers of all the Infinity Stones, which goes to show just how strong the Watcher is. Does he have any love interest? Does he feel emotions? While it may seem unlikely, the Watcher is actually married. He married a fellow Watcher called Ulana. They even had a child together and after his untimely death, Ulana had to take care of their child alone. So, Watu definitely feels a lot of emotions. He has broken a solemn vow of non-interference so many times simply because he felt so strongly about Earth and its residents. If he had not felt so strongly for us, I do not think the Marvel Universe would have expanded the way it did. What consequences will arise if the Watcher breaks his solemn vow of non-interference? While it may seem to us that the Watcher is this all-powerful being who is above everything when it comes to his race, he is just like us, and he is not above the law. When the Fantastic Four ended up getting their superpowers thanks to the cosmic rays, the Watcher stood there and watched. Then, when they went to the blue side of the moon for an adventure, they had to face off against the Red Ghost and his super apes. As they were fighting on the land that the Watcher claimed to be his own, he revealed himself to the Thing and the Red Ghost and allowed him to carry on fighting. When the Fantastic Four won the fight, he revealed himself to them again and urged them to look for the stars before going away. He watched as the superheroes went back to Earth. Uatu reached out to the Fantastic Four again when Molecule Man, a villain who can control the molecules to make up everything, threatened to destroy them. Once the Fantastic Four had defeated and banished the foe, Uatu captured Molecule Man and reassured the heroes that the villain would never return. He also undid all the damage that Molecule Man did on 
on Earth and went back to simply observing. He even physically interfered in a fight between two opposing Kree factions, which his people deemed too much interference. I mean, Uatu was not upholding his oath anyway, but getting into the middle of the fight was considered too much. This led to him being on trial, and eventually he got out of the trial with a slap on his wrist after he promised not to interfere ever again. But obviously, that was a lie. And the moment Uatu's emotions got the best of him, he interfered again, and this led to him being fired from his job for a period of time. What speed does Uatu the Watcher possess? When you first see the Watcher, he may not seem very strong or agile. However, the moment he is in a fight with anyone, his whole demeanor changes and you truly realize how strong he is. The Watcher has super speed, which is faster than the speed of light as well as any other being present in the multiverse. This super speed is something we get a very clear idea of when we see the Watcher face off against Ultron. Ultron chased the Watcher throughout the galaxy and every time the Watcher was able to keep up his pace with Ultron, not only that, but there were moments when the Watcher was faster than Ultron, which helped him get a few hits in. This super speed paired with his agility and reflexes makes Watu a rather significant opponent. Does he have an ability to hide the entire Earth? Uatu was given the job of watching over Earth and its residents and seeing how they ended up faring. However, whenever disaster struck, Uatu ended up getting involved, even if it meant going against the vows that he took as a watcher because of his emotions. He knew he needed to protect the planet and the people in it, so he revealed himself to the Fantastic Four and helped them defeat the Molecule Man, but that is not all that he did. As we know, Silver Surfer became the Herald of Galactus after he offered his life to to make sure Galactus spared the Zenla. He was forced to travel through the cosmos looking for more planets for Galactus to feed on. One such planet that he chose for Galactus was Earth. Now, Watu the Watcher had seen the way Galactus treated the planets, and he knew that if he warded off the Silver Surfer, he would be able to prevent Galactus from showing up to feed on Earth. So, by using a matter mobilizer, Uatu tried to conceal the planet from the Silver Surfer. The machine raised a fire shield around the planet, turning the Earth's sky bright red. But this obviously led to the people panicking, so Watu swapped out the fire for inorganic debris as making the Earthlings panic was not something he wanted. However, despite all the measures that Watu took, the Silver Surfer did end up on Earth, and we all know the story that follows. But yes, the Watcher does have the technology that can help him hide the whole planet if there is any need. Can he change his body size and shape? One of the coolest powers that Uwatu has is his ability to manipulate the size of anything. We have seen him manipulate the mirror dimension barrier and shorten it just enough to trap Eric Killmonger and Arnim Zola. But that is not all. He can also change his own size. He can be as big as Galactus is, or he can just be a floating head in the sky, and as we saw in the Silver Surfer animated series. He can also change his body size and end up in the human proportions to make him seem more approachable, as long as his environment allows it, the Watcher can change his size accordingly. We have also seen him big enough to hold Thor in his hand. How does Uatu the Watcher's teleportation ability function? As he is a fifth dimensional being and lives near the nexus of all realities, this will not come as a surprise to anyone when I tell you that Uatu uses teleportation quite a bit. Unlike most teleporters that just go poof and disappear from place A and show up in place B, Uatu changes his body into a form of energy once in its form he travels from place to place at a speed that is comparable if not faster than the speed of light itself. Not only that, but the Watcher can also use this ability to transport other people through the dimensions. How does Uwatu the Watcher navigate dimensions and time? One of the first things that we need to understand about the Watcher is that he has powers that are at unfathomable levels. He is far more powerful than we can imagine, and that is why he is the one tasked to stay near the nexus of all realities, the gateway to the multiverses. Obviously, as someone who is watching over all of the alternate realities as an occupational hazard, he has to have the power to travel through time and dimensions, and unsurprisingly, he does. He has so much power that he can easily pass through the barriers that separate the realities and observe everything that is happening in those. In order to reach these areas easily, he can teleport to the point of his interest with ease. He can also use portals to go to any location of interest in the multiverse. Is he immortal? When we first meet the Watchers, it seems like these fifth dimensional beings are immortal for sure. However, as the original Sin series came out, we realized that it is simply hard to kill the Watcher. In the original Sin story, we see that the Watcher is dead, and someone has taken both of his eyes. The Avengers who had rushed to the scene had to figure out the culprit, and sure, they found one of them. It was Orb, this mercenary who was hired by a villain known as Dr. Midas. This doctor had intended to rob the base of the Watcher, and 
so he had Orb attack Uatu and drained his powers. However, they were not the ones who killed him. It was actually Nick Fury who did it. Nick saw the distress signal from Moon and showed up to help. He found Uatu in such weakened conditions, and when he asked who had done this to him, Uatu refused to answer because of the vow. This led to Nick taking his eye. Now, obviously, if Uatu had not been weak, Nick would not have been able to steal his eye. However, as he was weak, it makes sense why Nick was able to get it. Does he have resurrection ability? Now, Nick took the eye of Uatu because he knew this was going to be the only way for him to stop the criminals who had attacked Uatu in the first place. However, as Nick Fury killed Uatu, he was punished by the Council of Watchers and was turned into the Unseen who was bound to the moon and forced to do Uatu's job in his place. While this was happening, there was a race called Kotati who were trying to take over the whole world. The Avengers and Fantastic Four confiscated the weapons of this race and tried to understand the technology behind the weapons, but it was was far too advanced for them. Even the Elder of the Universe, the Profiteer, failed to recognize the weapons. But when Unseen picked the weapons up, Uatu emerged from his eye. Uatu fixed his house and got into the head of the now powerless Fury. He learned everything that had happened since his death, and he recognized the weapons as Watcher technology. With that revelation, Watcher set out for the first war with Fury being his operative. Can Watcher beat Watcher? There are not a lot of Watchers who are as benevolent as Uatu. Neither do they share the same motivations as he does. When we see Aaron, Uatu's nephew, we get a glimpse of what the need for survival can do to someone, person, and alien alike. Initially, Aaron wanted to be just like Uatu and follow in his footsteps. However, when he saw the Celestials threatening to wipe out the whole race of the Watchers, he got scared. He became solely focused on surviving the whole ordeal, and at one point, he wanted to turn the Milky Way galaxy into his pocket dimension where he could slip into and stay safe. Now the Fantastic Four heard about the threat that the Celestials gave and were able to persuade the Celestials to do otherwise. However, Watcher knew that keeping Aaron as a rogue watcher who has such selfish needs and lacks of morals would be a problem. So Watcher fought with his nephew himself and ended up defeating him. He turned his nephew into a living energy. Seeing Watcher turn on his nephew like this was something that the other watchers condemned. And soon enough, Watcher was exiled from his post. While the Fantastic Four did not quite understand why this was necessary, Uatu assured them that his being stripped of his position and being exiled was justice being served. However, soon enough, Uatu was back in his position. Marvel's Verdict The whole concept of the Watchers is very interesting to me. Here, we get to see a race that is so powerful and yet decide not to interfere because they had once done it, which led to mass genocide. While I understand why the Watchers refused to interfere in any conflict, I do have to admit that Watu's compassion and emotions for what is right and what should be done make him stand out from the crowd. He has great powers, so he also has great responsibilities. He always stands up for what he thinks is right and is willing to take what whatever punishment he gets for his actions. The way he carries himself is something that I think we all can look up to. If you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.